So we've learned our seven beginner techniques. We've done our planning and conceptualization. Now is the time to execute this task. Let's get into it. This task is gonna be so much easier because we've planned properly. We've already got lots of comments. It's a process of translation. Now translating those comments into VBA. Let's get into the VBA editor. The first thing to note is that I have put a new line of code here. So I'd call this organic code. It's code that I know. As you go through your VBA career, you're gonna know more and more code. I call that organic code. This code is useful for coloring cells. We're gonna see it, how it works later. So I'm just gonna, just gonna go Control X first. Then where does this go in the code? So I'm using the comments straight away adjust color so i'm going to drop this code control v later in the routine we'll see how that code works later so now it's a case of going through the comments one by one translating them into vba firstly our variable declaration at the top we're going to have two integer variables whole number variables so how do we declare a variable we say dim then i'm going to say color store now we do see people online declaring variables with names like a b c x y z i like informative names reading the variable name can we understand the function of the variable that's going to make things easy for us later and then we're going to say as integer because this is going to be a whole number variable a variable is a place to store information this variable is storing whole numbers we can see that from the previous line of code i showed you so that's our first variable declaration done second variable declaration we're going to say dim counter as integer so fans of the tiger channel would have seen this variable before this is a counting variable it's going to count through the south so let's call it counter that makes it easy to understand. What do we got to do next? We've got to initialize a variable here. So we're going to take color store and just give it a value, assign it a value, initialize it, make sure it's storing something. And we're going to say 37. That's going to be the first color we start with. These, these colors come from a color index. If you internet search Excel VBA color index, you can see the colors. I'm not sure what color 37 is. We're going to find out soon. So we've initialized our variable. Next, we've got to select a cell, a starting point for this routine. Just looking at the spreadsheet, well, a sensible starting point would be, let's say D5, because that's the first date. So we're going to say range D5, D5 dot select. And that's just going to select the cell that's going to get us started. What have we got to do next? We've got to start a loop. We've got to open a loop. So can you remember from the first video, how do we open the particular type of loop we're using in this series? We're going to say for counter equals one, two. Now, how far does this loop need to go? Let's go down, down to the bottom of the data. So control and down cursor is going to take us down to the bottom of the data. Just bring that into your screenshot. We can see we've got to go to row 384, but we're starting on row one. So I think if we say 383 here, that should get us to the bottom of our data set. What do we need to do when we open a loop? We've got to close a loop at the same time. If we forget to close a loop, that creates a lot of error messages that are difficult to understand. So let's remember to close it and let's close it straight away. Where does the loop close? Well, let's look at the annotations, the comments we've already done. We're going to say next counter here. I can tell this is where we want to close the loop because we have our helpful notes here. And one further point here that won't affect the operation of the code, but will make it easier to understand. I'm going to select all this code, just hit the tab key. That's going to indent the code across, allow us to understand the structure. So I recommend indenting code properly. What have we got to do next? Well, it's our conditional statement, probably the trickiest part of the code again. We're going to start with an indentation because this is a new structure. Then we've got to configure this conditional statement. So you might want to stop the video. First, logically, logically, what are we saying to Excel? Well, we're saying to, saying to Excel, if the date in the cell is different to the date or the value in the cell above, then we want to change the color. That's the logic. That's the concept. Get that clear in your head before you try to do the coding. So we're going to say if selection dot value does not equal 
And then we want to say the cell above. How could we do that? What's the super cool method that we know to do with position control that allows us to do that? Yes, it's offset, of course. Dot offset, then we want the cell above. So that's one row above and then zero columns across. So that's how it works with offset. So how many rows, then how many columns? A negative value is gonna move us a row up. So if selection value does not equal selection dot offset, negative one, zero dot value, then, so we've opened our conditional statement. Let me just make the indentation consistent even for the comments there. So we've opened the conditional statement. What do we need to do straight away? That's right, we need to close the conditional statement just like we opened and closed a loop. We just say end if, that allows us to close the conditional statement there. Hi guys, if you like this content, you might also like my live development channel. It's called Excel Spreadsheet Skunk Works. If you like this kind of content, you're gonna love it. We're doing live VBA development over there. Let's get back into it. So we've defined that tricky condition, but we need something else to happen because if this condition is met, we want the color to change. That's gonna give us the alternating color effect that really is the purpose of this task. So first, I'm gonna just tidy up these annotations a bit. So this annotation, of course, relates to the line of code that we just wrote. So let's get everything neat and tidy, properly lined up there. And then, yes, so we're looking to change the value of the variable to an alternative. So that in programming language is what I just described, which is changing the colors. So uh, control V, paste that in. And how are we gonna do this? So it's gonna be another tricky piece of code, but you do know, you do know the essential techniques required to do this. I'm gonna tab this across. So if the value of the color store variable, which is controlling the color is 37, we're starting with 37, we're gonna change it to 38. If the value is 38, we're gonna change it back to 37. That's the logic that we're translate, trying to translate into Excel VBA. So stop the video, try to do it yourself first. I'm gonna say if color store, underscore store of course, equals 37, then, and here is what we want to happen. If the condition is met, color store equals 38, and then else, if the else condition is met, then the color store must equal 38. So we're just gonna reset, if you like, the variable back to 37. So color store equals 37, then we need to close the conditional statement so we don't get errors and we don't get into a mess later. So end if at the bottom. So this is a fundamental structure, conditional statement structure that's gonna be super useful in your Excel VBA. So we've managed to control the color, but that's not gonna do anything to the spreadsheet, just changing the value of the variable. We now need to do the coloring. And we've got, got it in our annotations down here, of course. So control X, and let's bring this in here. Just gonna bring uh, this annotation up a few lines. And then we're gonna say selection.interior.colorindex. I'm happy with that code, but what I'm not happy with is this hard, coded values. So if you know the answer to this question, you're really understanding what we're getting at here. What change do we need to make to this line of code to make everything work? Where is the information stored about color? Can you remember? Is it all coming together for you? Don't worry if it's not. It might take a bit of time. Let's keep going. So we're going to say color store. So the value of the cell, the value of the color in the cell, if you like, is going to equal the value that we have assigned to our variable. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense. We'll run, run through it in a second, see if we can get it working. We're not using the macro recorder to record any code. So we can just delete that line of code and then I'm gonna move down. So what else do we need to do? We're working through our routine head. We need to do some communication with the user at the end, particularly a message box. So let's just create a simple message box first. Can you remember how to do that? Again, stop the video, try to do it yourself first. And let's say message box, um, cells changed. Let's say cells colored. And Americans, if you want to miss out the U, you know, don't worry, I won't hold it against you. Zero gives us uh, the default message box, a simple message box. And then we'll just say complete. And this last component is the title at the top of the message box. It usually says Microsoft Excel. We can make it say something more informative for the user there. So this is gonna make a simple message box flash up with cells colored. That's useful 
tells the user the macro is finished, good communication, but we can do better. Remember, we had an annotation here saying how many cells have changed. So again, this is a more advanced question. Stop the video. How can we make the message box flash up how many cells have changed? And to be honest, it's super, super cool if you get this. This is a tough question. It's all about storage of information. Where is information stored in the VBA editor? We can use variables to store information. What variables have we got? Well, we've got the color store variable, but this one is not about coloring. This is about how many cells have we colored? Ah, we have a variable that was counting that, counted that information, and we gave it an informative name. So now it's helping. Now we've got all that cognitive load. Our mind is busy with all this code. It's really helpful to have informative variable names. So back to the message box, we can just say counter, which is our variable name, of course, then we're going to need an and sign. And the and sign is going to concatenate, join together the value in the variable with the text string. And our text string is just going to say cells colored. So hopefully, this is going to flash up the number of cells colored, I'm going to have a space there that's going to separate the value from the text string there. So let's give it a go. One thing we can guarantee is it probably won't work first time. So we're going to go control S, save the file, and then we're going to step through the code. But before I do that, I'm just going to tidy up some values here, delete this 100, I'm not sure what that was for, and then just clean up the formatting here. So I've selected the cells, shift key uh, and the arrow keys, the cursors, then we're going to go home and no fill, you can do that. Uh, I'm going to say Alt H H N, that's Alt H H N, window shortcut, and that's going to uh, remove any coloring from the cell. So we're ready. This is our moment of truth. Have we got this task complete? Well, we're still in the testing stage. Let's hit the F8 key, step through the code. Now I'm stepping through the code, hitting the F8 key. I, I can already do cool stuff like hover the cursor over the variable to see the value of the variable. Now, when a line of code is highlighted yellow, that means that the code hasn't been executed yet. So if I execute this line of code, hit the F8 key, we should see D5 highlighted, selected in Excel. So important, this skill, line up the VBA editor and Excel, run through the code, see what's happening in Excel. We can see D5 is selected, so far so good. Then we're into our loop here, and we get to our tricky conditional statement. What are we expecting to happen here? Is this condition met or is it not met? Well, the condition is saying, if the value in the cell does not equal the value above, then we're going to do something. So the condition is met. So I think we're going to go into this code, which we do. We're only going to do that if the condition is met. Then we've got another conditional statement. So if color store equals 37, how can we quickly find the value in the variable? Just hover the cursor over the variable. So I'm expecting Excel to go to this line of code because the conditional statement is met. The condition is met. Hif hitting F8. So we've changed the value of the variable and then we're out of our conditional statements. What are we expecting to happen now? What's going to get a bit more exciting? Hopefully we're going to see something happen in the spreadsheet. What's going to happen when we execute this line of code? Let's do it. Okay. And we've got a glorious pink color. We have some highlighting that. Okay. Next counter. So we're going to go back to the top of the loop. Remember, we're going to loop through this code 383 times, although I don't think I'm going to step through it that many times. I will step through it a couple of times so we can understand what's going on. So is this conditional statement met? Ah, I can see I've missed something out here. This is why we do our testing, of course. So what we can see is we haven't moved the selection down. So at some point, we need to move the selected cell down. So I'm going to do that by saying selection.offset uh, and then the cell below. How would we configure that with offset? Well, it's one row down zero columns across. So selection.offset10.select one zero dot select is going to select the cell below. That's how it works. That's how it works. Programming. That's what it's like. You're going to make mistakes. This is why you've got to step through the code. These are the essential beginner techniques. So I'm going to control S, save the file. I'm going to go ahead and reset the code, then hit the F8 key. I'm going to go through with a bit more pace. Now we can see we've got the pink coloring. That's fine. And then we've selected, crucially, you can see we've selected cell D6. Hitting the F8 key, 
Now, what color is going to go into cell D6? It should be a different color, of course, because we've changed the value in our variable. We've now got this blue color coming in and we're going to select the cell below. OK, let's keep going. So what are we expecting to happen now? Well, you could see we didn't go into the conditional statement because our condition is not met because the value in D7 does equal the value in D6. That condition is not met. So we're not going to do any changes to the variable. And you can see we've got the same color. So can we pick up the pace a bit? OK, it's going to get interesting when we get to row 12. So we've now selected row 12. We can see we've got a different date in row 12. What's going to happen? Where is the code going to go? Stop the video. Where is the code going to go? Where do you think? We're going to go into the conditional statement now because the condition is met. Change the value of that variable back to our glorious pink color, hopefully. And then working through, we should have our pink color there. I'm going to hit the F8 key, go over to the other side of the screen here. Keep hitting the F8 key, working through. We can see this coloring seems to be working reasonably well. I'm just going to go down to the bottom of your screenshot there and it does seem to be OK. So I'm going to stop the uh, routine now. Go ahead, hit the play button, the moment of truth. Hit the play button and then let's see what happens. OK, so the code has run. We've got 384 cells colored. This is our informative message. Now, just going through. I can see it looks reasonable enough. So I'm checking, have we got that alternating colors for the dates? It looks reasonable enough. But one thing I did notice, one slight inaccuracy down at the bottom here, we've got some additional cells colored. Why did that happen? Well, it's because our counting variable is not quite configured properly. This value 383, it's too, too big because we didn't start in the first row. We started a few rows down. So I'm going to take this value down by three to 380. Then go ahead, select the whole column. Alt H H N is going to remove all of the coloring, including our coloring at the top here. So Control C, Control Alt and V and T. That brings the coloring back into the column header. And then Control S, save the file, play the code. And then it's all looking good. 381 cells colored. So that gets us to the end. We've executed the task and congratulations. If you got this far, I hope you've learned something. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the Essential Beginner Tech Lead series. VBA is like life. So many people out there want easy solutions. You know, on this channel, I'm not giving you the easy solutions because in truth, there are none. You, the only way to do it is to grind out these basic skills, these essential skills. But that's what you've done. You've learned the basic concepts in a nice controlled environment. In the first video, we had those easy examples. And then you've learned about proper planning and conceptualization for VBA code. The conceptual understanding is critically important. You know, when people are having problems, the problems are really technical. They're conceptual. People don't know in their own head how it should work. And then in the final video, we put it all together and executed the task. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Let me know in the comments what it was like. I'll see you in another video on the channel.